When I was describing the bodybuilders who are during this very low calorie cutting phase, to, they've been bulking, bulking, now they need to cut and get super lean. Every one of them will document the one thing they will say is that they have an obsession with food. They, are obsess they think about food 24-7. Talk to any celebrity who's had to lose a substantial amount of weight for a role. They will say, I'm obs I was obsessed with food. It was, the, it was a constant preoccupation. A bodybuilder or a movie star with this full team and millions of dollars on the line, they will have a motivation that the average individual will not. While they can get through with just sheer grit and determination that phase and, and a lot of help, the average individual will not. Yeah. Myself included. I don't yeah. mean to cast a, uh, aspersions on anyone else. Yeah. I couldn't do this. Yeah. Uh, this you are you will fail. Uh, yeah. It requires a level of of just sheer grit and determination and discipline that I'm not ashamed to say I don't have and most people don't either. It's basically <laughs> like you have bandoliers of of energy bars and energy drinks and and you can never open them. I look at where I live in Utah up in the mountains. It's very common for people to go on hikes. I have a sort of tragic, a dark humor when I see these obese individuals starting a, a two or three mile hike and they have a fanny pack of energy bars and little energy goos that you see people take during marathons and, and triathlons. And I think to myself, you have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of calories stored on your body waiting to be burned. And ironically, you're adding to your mass burden on this hike yeah. by taking more calories yeah. with you. Imagine the, that is the, that's the poor metabolic flexibility or the yeah. metabolic inflexibility that's yeah. been identified over the years where essentially they're stuck burning glucose. Yeah. And nowadays, people in social media always want to invoke the Randall cycle, this idea of, well, the cell can't burn both fat and glucose at the same time. Well, yeah, of course it can't. Um, there's you need one primary energy source at any given moment because it's competing for the same biochemical pathways. And, and so people want to invoke the Randall cycle as if they're kind of clever. The Randall cycle is simply stated the phenomenon that a cell will burn either glucose or fat primarily at any given moment. Mm -hmm. Well, guess who decides which one it burns? They want to say that it's all a matter of what's available. No, it's not. No, don't tell me that, because then why is a type 1 diabetic who skips their insulin injections, they have a glucose level of... I'll invoke millimolar for the local audience, yep. 15 millimolar, yep. which is three times, four times too high, and yet they're, they cannot stop burning fat, and you're telling me that it's all a matter of what's available? No, I just proved you wrong. Yeah. It's insulin. It's hormones that yeah. tell the body, that tell the cells what energy to burn. Yeah. Yes, the human metabolic machine is a hybrid. It's a genius thing, relying on either glucose or fats. It's insulin that tells the cell what to burn. Insulin mm -hmm. is what tells every cell of the body what to do with the energy that it has. And maybe just to put the cherry on top of that statement, in my lab at BYU right now, we have an incubator that's growing all kinds of cells, including fat cells. As just a funny point of irony, it is very hard to grow fat cells in a culture dish, in a Petri dish, whereas okay. we can grow muscle cells like like weeds, right. but fat cells are stubbornly difficult things to grow. They need a perfect kind of cocktail of, of molecules in order to be told it's time to get fat. We will have the fat cells growing in this dish, swimming in a bath of calories. They have all the energy they need. And so yet you've they, got the fat cell surrounded with yes, sugar. Sugar and fats. The, oh, all I've, the fuel of fat cell I whatever this want. this is going where I'm thinking gets yeah, going. Yeah, and, and yet they don't grow. We're looking at them day after day. I'll have my student looking at them. Dr. Bickman, they're not growing. I'll say, <laughs> yes, because they don't know yet what to do. This, every cell wants to play nicely with the organism. A fat cell doesn't know what's happening at a muscle cell. It doesn't know that we're up and running. How would it know that? It, it's, it's not running. It's not doing any more work than it ever was. It has to be told what to do. Insulin tells the cell what to do, especially the fat cell. And indeed, the moment we start sprinkling in a little insulin into that bath, check those cells 24 hours later, all of a sudden they have a substantial lipid droplet or they're a chubby cell. Check it 24 hours again, they're even bigger than before. Deprive the insulin, give it a day, and they're all shrunk back down to normal. Wow. A cell must be told what to do with the energy that it has.